Good evening. How are you? Don Cohen here uh, from the math program. And uh, I have with me a friend of mine, Ian Robertson, who is an inventor of mathematics. And he's 17 years old and going off to Oberlin College, Ian, right? Yeah. In September. I've been working with Ian approximately, uh, what, 11 years? Yeah, that's about right. Since second grade or so. And I have found Ian has invented a lot of things that I never knew about, and I uh, learned a lot from him. And a lot of the things that he has invented is in my book, Calculus by and for Young People, ages seven, yes, seven and up. And what I'd like Ian to do today is to try to explain a little bit of how he go about, goes about to invent the math. And he's uh, willing to do that on TV here with us today. So why don't you go ahead, Ian? OK. Um, generally, what I do is I look for patterns in math, because that's largely what mathematics is. Um, one particular way I look for patterns is um, what I call a difference tree. This is one example I wrote up. Um, if you have uh, powers of three, one cubed, two cubed, three cubed, four cubed, five cubed, and so on. I only went up to five here. You can take the differences of those. These are the actual numbers for the cubes. And then these are the differences. 8 minus 1 makes 7. Uh, 27 minus 8 makes 19. 64 minus 27 is 37. And 125 minus 64 is 61. Now, that, those numbers in themselves don't look too interesting. But if you do the same process again and again and take the differences, you get the numbers 12, 18, and 24. At this point, something is beginning to seem familiar. And if you take the differences again, you find that you're getting 6. And if we were to extend this on down the line, we would get 6 all the time at the uh, third difference. Now, this difference, uh, differencing is uh, not only good for the cubes, which you've done here, but for any uh, squares or whatever. Right? Yes. Uh, for the squares, you would take two differences and get a difference of uh, And you were two. doing this like in uh, third grade. You were taking differences already. Yeah, I think that it, uh, it's a good way to find out a lot of patterns. Uh, I've used it with uh, finding out Pascal's triangle in a similar way. It's in the book, right. talking about that and so on. I've always found it to be very useful. Um, another pattern that I came up with uh, more recently, just this last year, in fact, uh, I was sitting in physics class, and uh, the lecture wasn't that interesting, and uh, started playing around with my calculator, just taking uh, what are called um, power towers, where you take a number raised to its own power. So 1 to the first, which equals 1, 2 to the second equals 4, 3 to the third is 27, 4 to the fourth is 256, and so on. I've gone down here to 8, to the eighth power. And uh, the series grows pretty quickly. Now, and was there something you were thinking about to get you to this point, or you were just playing with the... I was just playing with the calculator, okay. basically, um, right. sort of seeing how these grow and grew, and I was sort of writing them down on paper, and I was curious if there was a relationship between these numbers. Um, I thought about taking differences, as I had with, uh, say, the uh, cubes, but that didn't seem to be too effective for numbers growing this quickly. Yeah, you work a lot with ratio, the idea of ratio. Yeah, and... I think that's important, isn't it? Yeah, it, it, uh, in this case, it uh, makes a whole lot more sense to work with ratios because the numbers are growing so fast that differences would be, at least it appeared that they would be pretty meaningless. And I decided that taking the ratios of the number would be much more productive. Uh, I divided in this case, so 4 divided by 1 is 4, 27 divided by 4 is uh, 6.75, and so on. At this point, uh, they seem to be increasing by a fairly uh, constant number. And uh, so then I went back to the uh, differencing of uh, addition and subtraction, subtracting these numbers. Um, so it's actually a combination of ratios and differences in this case. And what so I both things are important. Yes, both of them are. <laughs> but the ratio really is like well, number it, one. Well, it, it depends on what you're working with. With Pascal's triangle, the ratios are the only thing you use. With um, powers like cubics, uh, the difference is the only thing you use. In this case, it happens to be something where both are used. This is a rather rare example, I think, uh, where 
you're Use working both, between the two. Both the ratio and the difference. The main thing is to be able to work with both and sort of have a good sense of when to use one and when to use the other. Uh, otherwise, you can end up spending a lot of time without producing much. But anyway, I decided at this point uh, it seemed more sensical, sensible to uh, take the differences. And when I did, I was getting roughly 2.7. Well, here it was up 2.75. Down here it was approaching 2.72 or maybe even a little lower. And I looked at that number, and it seemed to resemble the number E, which is 2.718. And uh, I sort of developed a hypothesis, which uh, was that if you continued this series, you would eventually approach a limit of E. And uh, that's what I've written out here uh, in a rather condensed form. It's if you take x plus 1 to its own power over x to the x and subtract from that the ratio of x to the x divided by x minus 1 to its own power. The limit of that as x approaches infinity is e. And I tested that on a calculator uh, plugging in numbers like 20 or 50, and it turns out to be true. Uh, very close approximation. Very close. In fact, at 20, it's accurate to about four decimal places. And we have done it on uh, the computer program Derive, and you uh -huh. get uh, e, t e yeah. as yeah, a result when you yes. take the limit. And we, uh, both of us, have subsequently come up with some proofs, uh, some very long and some rather short, which proves of this. Right. Proves this. But uh, the interesting thing was finding it in in this way of the uh, differences in ratios and sort of an interesting way. I, that's what I really like about math, is how it can shift and all sorts of patterns can come up in places you wouldn't expect to find them. Now, you've been thinking about math a lot. Uh, you continuously to do that, I think, and I think that's what it takes. Well, yeah, it, it always uh, tends to go through my mind a lot. And, uh, in physics class, it sort of is there more so because it's the science which is uh, a very logical thing, and math revolves around that. And plus, we had our calculators out, so I. <laughs> you had them right there. <laughs> anything you want to? Anything else you want to say about this and how you do it? Uh, I don't know. It's it's largely an intuitive thing. I think it's an intuition that can be learned, though, and I think more people should be encouraged to learn that sort of intuition. Uh, I've gotten a lot of joy out of it, and I think that it's the kind of thing that a lot of people who don't even think they're that good at math can actually do. Yeah, I think that's encouraged. crucial, too, that it's important that people who are not necessarily geniuses can do math, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah, I think that's uh, about all we're going to say today. I think uh, Ian has said it all. Uh, but math is important, and people can do it, and Ian has certainly done it. Thank you for coming. Sure. Thanks. Thank you.